Well, hey, Ginger, thank you so much for joining us right now. In your second book, A Little Closer to Home, you open up and you share a lot of personal things as it relates to depression and balancing life. So tell us, how did you personally find that calm after the storm? Ah. Well, it's taken a while, and I'm not all the way there, uh, but I have learned a lot about the process and the tools that I require and that I think a lot of people can, can require to get better. Mental health, to me, it should be our primary priority. It should be everything, and that's when I started to see real gains in the mental health gym is when I put it as number one. What am I going to do today to make my mental health better? And then everything else seems to fall in place. And in the book, you talk about an experience where you went paragliding and you found your mental wings. So tell us a little bit what that kind of means. <laughs> Most of my life, I have been deemed fearless. And fearless meaning I will jump off of mountains and I will skydive and I'll do anything that physically or even natural disaster wise uh, can stimulate me, right? Uh, but when it comes to feelings and human and sharing my story, that was the scariest. That is where I was full of fear. I was so afraid of feeling. And that paragliding story, kind of mixes those two things together. It's the first time where after I had been hospitalized, inpatient therapy for the first time in my life and gotten a proper diagnosis, proper therapy, I was finally healing to the point where I thought, wow, there is real love inside of myself for me. And that is where the real change started and that's where I feel like I was born. You know, I commend you obviously for using your platform for mental health. You know, that's something very important to me. And you did that with the first book, but this one dives a little deeper. What made you decide to really dig into the trauma at this time? The first one I saw the response and that was a book that I wrote and it felt like that was the 35,000 foot view of my life. Um, that I was so afraid to tell at the time and then saw the amazing response. People wrote me, they still write me today, saying you saved my life. That's huge. And that was from the 35,000 foot view. Then I started realizing when I heard other people speak about their sexual assault and rape, that was a part of my trauma and life that I had not dug into deep enough. So I thought, I'm going to make this book not about just digging into trauma, healing from that trauma, the tools that I've learned, but also about the hard work of maintaining healing. Because just like you don't go to the gym for a year and get a personal trainer, eat right, and then you have, you're in sick shape and you're like, okay, I'm going to stop now. That's not how it works. And that's not how it works with mental health either. I don't know, we've had conversations in the past and I believe it ties to this book about the importance of mental health networking and I consider you a part of my mental health network. <laughs> Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about what that means and the importance of it? I think sometimes people run into either, you know, immediate family or friends that aren't ready to hear it, that aren't ready to know how to help. Maybe they're not capable, but you need a team, you need a community, and that doesn't have to be your parent or your sibling. It might be too hard for them. They might have to do their own work. Sometimes it's easier to take someone who can be an acquaintance, like you and I, and then they develop into a friend. And that friend is a community of mental health journey, right? Just like you get a workout partner. How much easier is it when you've got a workout buddy? I think it's so much better. And that's what I think of you and other people that I've developed these relationships with after writing the book. Well, if there was one take home before everyone runs out and grabs your books, obviously natural disaster first, now a little closer to home, what message would you want them to have? If they're struggling, if they know someone's struggling, the most important message is this moment is temporary. Storms in life and in the atmosphere don't last forever. They just can't and won't. And if we can have that sliver of understanding in our darkest moments, that's the hope that I think we need to make it to the next day. Well, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again on your second book. And thank you again for everything you do for everyone, but also for me personally. So I appreciate you very much. Thank you. <laughs> you as well. Ginger will be hosting a virtual book tour tonight. You can find a link to join it and where to get a copy of your little closer to home. Right now, you can go to our website, abc24.com.